All right, let's see if we can make this video what it needs to be. So let's hop into a couple of things. Number one, we're going to cover my experience again briefly with Tessa Morlin and brief you about what happened to my resting or fasting IGF-1 and insulin levels. And then we're going to talk about uh, retitrutide, the triple agonist that very few people are talking about, but soon everybody will be talking about on the internet. That's right, retitrutide. You've got your semaglutide. You've got your uh, trepezide. You've got your you know single agonist GLP-1. You've got your dual agonist GIP and GLP-1. And now you've got your triple agonist with your glucagon uh, uh, agonist as well. And we're going to talk briefly about it. And we're going to talk a little bit, and just in the beginning, to start this video off, before I just talk about peptides, I want people to remember this. You can't heal an injury with exercise. See, everybody will make these crazy, ridiculous statements about how the only thing that's going to get you better is, you know, movement or exercise. When it comes to real injury, like real deformed hurt tissue, the only thing that makes it better is rest and time. That doesn't mean you do nothing. There are phases to it that I talked about in many videos between very passive all the way to very active. And the thing that exercise does, so we can clear this up and move on from it, is hormesis. That's what exercise does, it's hormesis. You build a resilience in your tissue, cellular level, exposure to trauma in a micro dose that builds tolerance. It's like starting out with a five pound dumbbell and moving up to a 50 pound dumbbell. That's just popped into my head in terms of the, the um, uh, comparison that I can give you or the analogy, but that's it. Remember that. So hormesis will allow you to build resilience, which will inevitably make you stronger. It will inevitably make you more prone to uh, an exposure or a stimulus that won't be so traumatic. Like if you lifted a 50 pound dumbbell for the first time in your life and you snapped your arm in half. So hormesis is the idea of exercise, which is the idea of developing and building resilience so that something should not be so traumatic when you do get injured in the future. But sometimes the, mo the, the, the greatest athletes in the world, you see them roll their ankle. And, you know, last night in baseball, I'm a big baseball guy, Jordan Alvarez ro rolls his ankle real bad and now he's out again. Is it this, well, Jordan Alvarez is a twig and, and his, you know, he, he's terrible and he's always injury prone. It's sometimes the world's best athletes get hurt. And so why are you out there who's not a top, you know, level athlete, some type of a uh, exception who thinks that they can just go and, you know, move in and, and exercise their way to a healthy back. Sometimes it takes rest, AKA synonymous with what I'm saying right now. The only way to truly heal is through rest and that rest a lot of the times or 99% of the time, majority of that happens actually at sleep, restful sleep, which takes us right into the topic of the day. I started to use Tessa Morlin for two reasons. So the growth hormone secreting peptide, excuse me, growth hormone secreting hormone peptide that I used was to sleep better, which it did, and to burn belly fat, which it did in the beginning, in the beginning. And why is that? Well, it's because Tessa Morlin is the um, IGF-1 uh, uh, analog that can and does promote lipolysis which you know reduces visceral fat, but it doesn't do it by raising energy expenditure all day the way that something like a uh, retitrutide is designed to do. Meaning, when we talk about visceral fat, we're talking about fat inside the organs, and there's only so much of that that you know is available to basically be targeted at once. So if you read into th to Tessa Morlin, it's not like it's going to you know, make you lose 50 pounds. The only thing that makes you lose 50 pounds is if you're in a caloric deficit. What does caloric deficit mean, right? You're expending more energy than you're taking in. So if you're using Tessa Morlin and you're not clearly in a significant uh, uh, caloric deficit, your body's going to hang on to subcutaneous fat. Your body's going to hang on to other types of fat and stored fat in your body. And unless you're turning it all into muscle, which we're going to go into in a minute, then you know, you're know you not gonna really get some amazing benefit with Tessa Morlin in terms of, in, uh, unless you are in a caloric deficit, you're very careful when you're dosing. You know, three and a half hours in my opinion now, post last meal, with the post perennial, and what you have to do is be you know very responsible with it, or what you'll actually notice is you're gonna get puffier and bigger. And when I, why puffier and bigger? Because when you're secreting growth hormone, secretagogue uh, type of 
uh, growth hormone secretion. Increasing IGF-1 levels is synonymous with increasing insulin, and that is, an, and that is synonymous like bodybuilders building muscle. And if you have um, extra uh, um, layers of, you know, we're just going to call it skin, right, <laughs> on your body, like, you know, you can do one of two things, store it as fat or you can build some muscle. And Tessa Morlin is a great uh, uh, um, performance enhancer to allow you to build muscle, especially, I think, if you're on testosterone, which I personally am not on testosterone replacement therapy. Will I in the future? Who knows? My testosterone is somewhere between six and 800 very reliably per all the different blood markers that I look at. So I'm not in a rush to go and have a, you know, 12, 13, 1500, you know, level testosterone. Everything uh, for me is working well when it comes to the testosterone uh, desires. So that's just not the goal. But Tessa Morlin, certainly early on when I was, again, I made a video about this, so I won't go, ver I won't go on very long. When I was using Tessa Morlin in a caloric deficit, similar to like an HCG style diet, and I mean like very carefully, probably eating around eight, 900 calories a day in the beginning, uh, upwards of maybe 1100 maximum, and dosing, you know, three and a half hours, three hours, mm, it was really three hours a couple of times, uh, of my daily dose of Tessa Morlin and sleeping like crazy. My back was waking up less stiff, meaning like I, I had less back pain. I was more functional. I was able to go to the gym and I was leaning out. I took a week off, came back, you know the story, after Baltimore, boom, I inject, same dose. I didn't titrate down. I blow up like an absolute water balloon. Ridiculous. Go and get my um, blood test on a Friday because I was like, I should not be this puffy and red. This is ridiculous. I'm embarrassed. And my insulin was a 29, which now is a 2. My IGF-1 was, a, I think, a 380, and now it's a 246. So high-end optimal IGF-1 insulin is the lowest it's ever been resting. Now, how did I accomplish that other than truly just eating very responsibly and stopping Tessa Morlin? Nothing really. You could say that because I did 0.5 milligrams. That's right, 0.5 milligrams. Not a single full milligram, but 0.5 of reconstituted retitrutide. Did that just magically fix me overnight with one dose? I mean, I don't know. I hear some really amazing stories about how fast retitrutide works. Now, what is retitrutide? Retitrutide is a triple agonist. You can watch this on a million channels. Don't just take my word for it. GLP-1 agonist, GIP agonist, and glucagon agonist, which means, in short, lower, blo lower blood sugar and reduce appetite. We all, we've all seen that before. That's why a lot of people lose weight, semaglutide or semaglutide. Uh, GIP boosts insulin release, which is important, and that supports fat metabolism. But then what do you do about potentially having low blood sugar? Oh, no. Or what do you do about too much insulin? Oh, no. Or I don't want to do anything. Well, now you have a glucagon agonist, which increases energy use and uh, fat uh, burning by also helping balance some of the excess maybe insulin that could be uh, produced by, by, via the GIP receptor. And glucagon, oh, no, glucose is gone. The liver releases glucose to kind of give you that extra boost which may inevitably not only help you uh, metabolize more fat properly, it may actually end up balancing your energy levels, which in turn should help you uh, want to do more like work out and build muscle. So these three, this triple agonist, which now for the second, I took another dose. Of the, I take, I'm taking 0.5 one week, 0.75 the next week uh, on a Wednesday in the afternoon, and then I'm going to take another 0.75 I don't know if after three weeks, will I go up to a full milligram? We're going to see. Um, I don't know if it's going to be beneficial for me. I have lost additional weight. I actually don't ever step on the scale. I'm sorry out there. So I can't give you the valid like scale um, type of uh, metrics, but I can give you that I put on jeans and my love handles aren't falling over to the side as much as they were three or four months ago. Because I started all this in July. So we've got July, August, September to half of September to go on. So very early July. So all of July, all of August, and uh, first part of September. Yeah, I think that's right. I sure hope it ain't June. But, and I've seen massive, massive change in my body composition. And I uh, will say the only negative effect that came after the Tessa Morlin is retitrutide very consistently across the board. And I hear this from people and I've watched some of the um, testimonials is your bathroom habits change. Uh, without getting too graphic, I will just say that with the delayed gastric emptying that should be happening, certain foods that used to not bother my stomach, now if I eat a little, like just a couple of bites too much, 
I do feel a little nauseous. Nauseous is not the right word. I feel a little constipated and it bothers my stomach. And then the when I do go, number two, it's just a little bit different than it was before. Um, but in terms of when I'm not overeating, which that's the point, you guys, these drugs like the GLP-1, GLP-2, these triple agonists now, they are designed to make you not hungry or to drown out the food noise, as they say. That's a, that's a real thing that definitely happens. There are times where I'll look at my breakfast, you know, a couple eggs, avocado on a piece of Killer, Killer Dave's bread, and I'm just like, coffee with my heavy cream will be fine. But then, you know, later if I am hungry, you know, I get fuller much faster. And I've noticed that I don't have an appetite for sweets anymore, which is incredible because that's what you don't want. You don't want sugary cereal bar, sugary protein bar. Uh, I think one time after a workout last Thursday, when I came back from the gym after a very hard workout, hardest I've had you know, in, in many years, to be honest with you, I think I was like starting to get kind of hungry and I did have a little bit of like a lean body protein shake. Again, I couldn't even finish it. So that gives you the idea of what those drugs are doing. So uh, now that I've ranted for 11 minutes, so let's look at it like this. If I had to kind of give you like a very, like a one sentence uh, um, answer of what's the difference between Tessa Morlin, which is a uh, horm human growth hormone secretagogue versus what is um, retitrutide gonna do, which is a GLP-3, if you will, I'm just calling it a GL3, pre, you know, three triple agonist for weight loss and, and, and consistent, you know, uh, reduction of hunger. I would say Tessa Morlin can mobilize fat, but it targets visceral fat and it pretty much will just allow your body to heal optimally while sleeping optimally, while having plenty of what they call satellite cells readily available for retaining and building muscle and you know, likely targeting some visceral fat. Whereas retitrutide is really going to reduce your hunger. It's going to really mobilize fat and boost caloric burning. Like you're gonna burn more calories uh, based on the mechanisms of, of retitrutide on top of the fact that you're going to be less hungry. And believe me when I tell you, if you overeat on a drug like a GLP-1, let alone the trepezide, let, uh, uh, trezepatide, uh, let alone um, a retitrutide, you're going to feel the effects and you're going to be really tired. You're not going to feel good. Your stomach's going to hurt. You're going to be nauseous. You're going to have start having some of these side effects you hear. Because what are some of the worst side effects that I think people can attest to, which have led to lawsuits and, and a lot of the like bad words, or you know, bad words, bad reviews, allegedly on uh, YouTube, social media in general, or, or real life, or where people are like my, my husband, my wife, my uh, uncle, my brother, whatever, got really hurt on this stuff. It's because they didn't have proper screening. They had a, a, a dose that was much too big without question, the dosing much too big on things like Ozempic, Wagovi. It seems that the, the um, starting doses are just too big in my opinion. And then people who aren't getting the desired effect, their doctors are like, let's up the dose. Like, are you crazy? These people are having the side effects of gastroparesis, of um, uh, pancreatitis. They're having the nausea. They're having the vomiting. Like you've got to, if not just reduce it, just stop it. And then just like get back to having a good relationship with food, which comes down to things like mindfulness, breathing, you know, understanding cost versus, you know, uh, uh, sorry, risk benefit. You know what I mean? Like what's the pros and the cons? You know, there are severe risks by, you know, overeating and what it's doing to us as a society. And the question is, can we have the self-discipline and the accountability to, ex to tell ourselves, you know, this is the way to eat healthy for longevity. And knowing that, can I use a biohacking, performance enhancing uh, peptide that is, you know, readily available to me? And in my opinion, in my experience, you know, micro dosing, like if I were you out there, micro dosing, like to me is the way to go. You just have to have some patience. You cannot take one dose in a week of retitrutide and think it's going to cure your eating and make you lose 35 pounds of fat and give you a chiseled body like it doesn't work like that. You need, I don't know, three to six months. Some of us need two to three years. How, you know, you can't undo everything that you've done to your body, again, like in a night. And uh, I, I hope people are realistic about this. You know, bodybuilders take years to achieve the physique that you see on stage. Athletes take years to achieve the level uh, that it takes to, to, you know, to, perform, to perform at the highest level. And utilizing peptides and, and 
performance enhancing slash biohacking, you know, peptides and other supplements or, or mechanisms or tricks, I mean, they take a while to see the full effect. Can you get a instant dose response reaction? Absolutely. It's the reason why you can take a five milligram. This is just an example. Why you can, you know, take a five milligram dose of uh, um, semaglutide and, you know, within the first few days, you know, just completely be like, oh my God, this stuff's working. I'm not eating. And then drop like, you know, 10 to 15 pounds of water weight. Like this is 100% achievable. But 10 to 15 pounds of water weight, you might feel thin. That does not mean you lost fat that at a rate of, you know, two pounds a week if you're lucky. You know, sometimes some people, you know, might only lose like three pounds in a given month of, of, of like real body fat. Again, it all depends on energy expenditure and, how, and what you're doing in between. Because before I get off this longer video than I intended, I want to point out that say you are somebody that works out, your energy expenditure and your caloric needs is going to be a lot different than someone who's just using these semaglutides or even the retitrutide or triple agonist as a, as a means to sit on the couch, be bored, and just not be interested in food. And I encourage all I encourage everyone who's listening to this, don't be the person that becomes disinterested in food, but also becomes disinterested in many other things, like just doesn't have the motivation. Be the person that uses this as the gateway to be more productive, be more active, be more of the hunter-gatherer that, that we were born to be. Be involved, be busy, fill your time with things that make you busy and productive so you can feel happy. And when you do eat and schedule your eating, you know, put a little alarm on, be like, oh my God, it's been, you know, three, four, five hours. I'm, I'm hungry. Let me have a grilled chicken sandwich, a grilled shrimp, you know, burrito, whatever it is, you know, just eating the right foods, real foods, no processed foods. And I guarantee you're going, well, I, I nearly guarantee you're going to feel the best you've ever felt. You're going to be very proud of yourself. Um, you're going to see a lot of body fat just kind of like whoop, falling off and you're going to see a lot more muscle just whoop, staying on. And, and anyone who says anything else is a liar. If you don't yourself want as much lean mass on your body and as much fat to be gone, you know, you're pretty much lying. And, I, and honestly, like that's for most men. Some females might say, oh, no, I, I want to be thicker. And, 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 and like look, there are plenty of benefits for child uh, um, bearing age women to actually want to keep some fat on their body, if not moderate amount of fat on their body. Well, that's great eat more food, include more fat, include moderate amount of carbohydrates that still don't come from processed food, exercise in moderation, be actually sure that you want to be in either a moderate to like slight to moderate caloric surplus, or, you know, say, I'm going to take this time to rest a little extra. I'm going to make, the, I'm going to take this time to have a little bit of extra fat in one of these meals. I mean, seriously, it's that I don't want to say simple, but it's that simple in terms of the logic about why you might want to retain fat for the same reason that us men, if you really want to be big, what we talked about with Tessa Moreland can do. And even without that, eat rice, eat potatoes, eat a lot of fat, eat, eat lean protein and eat fatty protein, eat apples with peanut butter. Again, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. I've gone on too long, but you know, you can have as much lean mass as you want doing everything we talked about early in the video, and you can have as much extra fat on your body by just putting it at the end of this video. Uh, the thing is accountability, preparation, doing the right thing because let's just face it, there's too much information that exists right now on YouTube alone, let alone anywhere else, and you can control how fast or how slow you consume this content and get, um, and, and, you know, get moving with it and you know, ask any questions you want. You know, they say maybe click the like button, subscribe, all of it. But I'm here for you, Dr. Perlman.